Any window with this view open will get the latest reading the moment the server receives it. This is an air quality monitor. Apparently, it's not healthy to sit in an enclosed space with rising CO2 levels all day. For this reason, everybody I know bought one of these chunks of hackable plastic. It uses an open protocol over Bluetooth LE to send measurements of temperature, CO2, humidity, and pressure to any device that wants to know. As an Elixir enthusiast, I naturally wanted to see if I could shove this data into a Live View app. But I quickly ran into a problem. At the time of this recording, there are no Elixir packages for this. As a backup plan, I searched crates.io and struck gold. Of course, the Rust folks have a package for it, and that's where today's project really began. Over the next few minutes, I'll show you how I used a tool called Rustler to read measurements of my office's toxicity into Elixir. Stick around, this is code and stuff. As always, code from this project can be found on GitHub with a link in the description. The Rustler hex package and its corresponding Rust crate make it easy to write safe, native implemented functions, or NIFs for short, through some build system magic and a few macros. Most tutorials online just show how to add two numbers together or calculate the Fibonacci sequence with Rust, but it turns out that the Rust programming language is a lot more than just a simple calculator. If you want to follow along, make sure that you have Rust installed on your machine, one of these sensors, and a computer capable of Bluetooth LE. If you don't have all these things, no worries. I don't even know why I would expect you to. The principles here will still apply to any native code that you want to run from Elixir, and you just might learn something. Since my goal is to use this in a live view, I created a fresh Phoenix project. Inside of this project, I'm going to install Rustler. We'll just add it to my dependencies and run a deps.get and deps.compile. With Rustler installed, I'm going to run mix rustler.new. I'll call this module air sensor dot native. This is something that most projects tend to do. I'll take the default name and in my native directory, I now have this rust project. Before we write our rust code, let's take a look at the crate that I found. This crate has a concept of a sensor that is obtained through the sensor manager. Sensors have a method to read values and all of the methods use async and await. Now, Rust's async implementation is honestly a bit of a hot mess since the language relies on zero cost abstractions as a hard rule. In practice, this means that most projects just rely on a crate called Tokyo, which is a managed runtime for async actions. So we're going to need a sensor instance. Let's create the Elixir side of this binding. Over in the project, I'm going to create this native module. And let's call it airsensor.native. Now this is going to use Rustler. It needs to know the OTP app that we're using, which in this case is air underscore sensor. And we need to know the name of the crate that we're building. And the crate's name is airsensor.native. And this just came from that generation command that I ran a second ago. Now, whenever you write something that is a NIF in Elixir, you have to do this special incantation. So I will, for our initialization function, write def init. And inside of the body of this, we're going to do erlang dot nif error and nif not loaded. This means that if we don't manage to load the native implemented function, we will run into this very specific error. It's something that the Beam runtime knows what to do with. Now over on the Rust side, let's install our package and install Tokyo. So I'll go into cargo.toml. This is like their version of a hex file. And I'll add the sensor and Tokyo with a multi-threaded runtime feature. It's just stuff that had to be there to make it work. So Rustler creates a add function that I was talking about before by default. But I'm going to replace this with an init function that will create a sensor instance. So let's create this new function. It's going to give back a result. And it'll have some sort of value or an error. Now, what should this result type be? 
The Beam VM has a concept called a resource. It's a reference to a native data structure. And Rustler lets us register resources by creating a struct, implementing a resource trait, and using a macro to register it. So I'll come up here and create a new struct, and I'll call it handle. It'll hold on to a sensor, which will be a sensor object from that package. And let's start pulling in some types here. Down below my struct, I need to mark that this is a resource, but I don't have to put anything in this body. I also need to register this struct, so I will run rustler resource impl. So this says that the handle struct that contains a sensor is a resource when it comes to the beam. And inside of this resource, there are no special functions registered that are custom for it. In this implementation, we could override the behavior when the resource is no longer in use or when a beam process being monitored by the resource terminates. There's just a couple of edge cases in here that make it a full resource, but there's some good defaults if we just use an empty implementation of the resource trait. Now it's time to actually implement the init function. Let's replace this unit response with our handle struct. Now, the other thing we'll wanna do is wrap this type in what's called a resource arc. An arc is an atomically reference counted pointer. Basically, we can use the handle across different threads and when the last reference goes away, the handle will be dropped. As I mentioned earlier, the crate that I found uses async rust, which requires a runtime. So I'll create a new runtime with let RT equals runtime. This is pulled in from Tokyo, new dot unwrap. Unwrap here means that I am ignoring any error that might happen when we're trying to create this runtime because I don't expect it to fail. Then I'll call RT dot block on this means we want to wait until the async function is finished. And the function that we want to run is sensor, sensor manager, init, none. The none here represents that we don't have a known address of a device that we want to run to. So instead, let's just take the first one that's in our area. This call returns a result, which is either a success or a failure. So I'll match that result. And if we're okay, that means that we have a sensor. Let's return an okay and create a resource arc of a handle containing our sensor. And if there was an error, we're actually gonna ignore the exact error and we'll return our own error message. With that out of the way, if I run my server, it'll go and install all of this Rust dependency stuff for the first time. This includes installing the sensor package and Tokyo itself. And it looks like I was missing a comma. So now I should be able to run air sensor .native .init. It'll ask me if I wanna connect using Bluetooth. And finally, I'll get back a reference object. Now, there is literally nothing that I can do with this reference object because it's just a pointer to something within this Rust library. So let's make it actually do something. These devices return a few properties, so I'll create a struct over on the Elixir side to keep track of those properties. We'll call this a sensor reading struct, and it contains the CO2 level, temperature, blah, blah, blah. The other thing we're gonna need, and I'll just put it here to start with, is we need a read function. This'll take in a handle, and it'll just be another one of these placeholder NIFs. Now, this struct has been defined over on the Elixir side, but we also need to make a mirror image of it over on Rust. So we have to derive this NIF struct macro, and then we also have to say what module within the Elixir side this corresponds to. Since this is a language with type safety, we have to define our types for each of these properties. Let's actually add that read function. So I'll just duplicate init and let's change its name over to read. Instead of returning a handle, 
this function will return a sensor reading. And it actually requires some properties. So in Rustler, the first property is always an environment. This is just built into Rustler. And then the other property we'll take in is a handle. And this is gonna be one of those resource arc handles. So I'm gonna write this one a little bit differently from init, and you'll see why in a second. I'm gonna run rt.blockon, but instead of taking in a function that's defined elsewhere, I'm actually gonna do an inline function. So it'll be an async block, and we'll say reading equals handle dot sensor dot read current values dot await. Then after we've awaited, let's see if this code will work. I'll bring in this match and create this sensor reading object. And again, in the case of an error, we're just gonna say failed to read sensor values. If I manage to write this correctly, I think the core Rust portion of this project is done. To test that out, I'm gonna restart my server. So I will initialize followed by a read. This might take a couple seconds, but in the end, I get a sensor reading. And sure enough, that 1057 is exactly what I see on here. We've taken a Rust crate and gotten access to its behavior through a thin binding layer. This crate was pretty simple, only containing a couple of methods and only really complicated by this async part. A very similar approach could be taken with most other crates you can find in the world. It'll just take some time and some Rust knowledge to carefully wire it up. Now, if you've been following Phoenix for a while, you've probably seen the 2019 thermostat demo from Chris McCord. It showed the world that LiveView exists, but it didn't actually interact with any real devices. I'd like to put a spin on it and use a live view to present air quality measurements in my app. Before we get to live view, I need to tell you a bit more about how these devices work. Their batteries last a really long time, mainly because they only take measurements every one, two, or five minutes, something you can configure on your own. There's no sense in reaching out to this device every time we want to read the data if it's usually gonna be the same. In Elixir, there's an abstraction called a gen server that's a perfect fit for managing a cache and performing periodic refreshes. It's basically a bundle of state that can respond to messages sent to it from other Elixir processes. So let's create a new module and we'll call it a polar. I'll paste in an implementation here and we can walk through it. This polar is pretty simple. What it does is it goes through a native initialization and then it uses a series of continue functions to make sure that it is fully set up before it receives any messages. So what it'll do first is it will initialize and get a handle, storing that in state, and then it'll continue to do its first reading. This first reading is actually pulled into a common function and this function will perform a read using the handle from our state and then store that measurement as our latest measurement returning that in our state. So gen servers are like miniature servers that run within our application. And to register this one, I'm gonna grab its name and then go to my application.ex. What I'll do is I'll paste in airsensor.polar as an application that needs to start before our web handler. Now, if I restart my server, my polar will start and we'll see this first measurement. To make this actually pull, Let's use process.sendAfter. So in this read, I'll say in some period of time, in this case, 30 seconds, let's call this poll function. And then we'll just have to define a poll function. Now, whenever you send a message to a process, it'll go to this callback called handle info. So when I pass this poll atom, it'll match over here and we will set up our next poll and then perform a read. Now let's add a method to fetch the latest value. This is done through a handle call callback. And all of these callback methods can be found in the gen server documentation, which comes with Elixir. With gen servers, it's common to set up a client interface method like latest, which abstracts away the verbose gen server dot call invocation. But all that you need to know is that the next time the server runs, I can call airsensor.polar.latest and get that latest value right away. Now that our data source is set up, we can create a page that will ask for the latest reading when it's mounted. So I'll go into my web project 
and create a live folder. And I'll create a sensor live module. Now this is a Phoenix live view module that when mounted will grab the latest measurement and then it just shows those measurements in a Tailwind styled format. I'll register this route as our defaults over in my router. So I'll change this from get to live. and This will be sensor live and there's no action because it's a live view. Now, if I go to localhost 4000, I'll see some measurements. But right now, this page would need to be refreshed every time we want to get new data. And that's not very live. So we can use Phoenix Pub Sub, which is built in. I'll go over to the polar, and when it grabs a new value, I'm just going to see, is that the same value as before? And if it's different, we'll broadcast it under this channel called Air Measurements. I'll also get rid of this debug statement because I don't think we're going to need it. Over in my live view, I can subscribe to the air measurements topic that we established a moment ago. And this will make it so that anytime that there's a new measurement, it will come in through the handle info method of the live view. So when a new measurement comes in, we will assign the measurement state to be this new measurement as it came in. Now, any window with this view open will get the latest reading the moment the server receives it. The 928 was just updated live to 901, representing the latest reading on this physical device. By combining the low-level power of Rust with Beam primitives like Gen Servers and Phoenix's LiveView PubSub, it's possible to create an app that would be pretty tricky to build with any other tech. Consider the difficulty of foreign function interfaces, Redis-based PubSub, and WebSocket management with other technologies, and it's clear that the Phoenix framework and the Elixir stack, backed by Rust when needed, is really powerful. Now, getting back to real life, it's unlikely that a server in a data center would have a Bluetooth LE stack and a nearby sensor, but I really wanted to see how I could combine these building blocks and create something new. To make this more robust, it would be important to improve the error handling, to mark the functions as dirty I.O., something that helps the Beam scheduler set expectations of their behavior. Um, Rustler also has a function called pre-compilation, which allows users of a package to use it without needing to have a Rust build toolchain installed. And finally, it actually looks like the crate that I wrapped doesn't properly clean up after itself when it gets dropped. But anyway, if you found this interesting, or if you want more content like this, let me know in the comments below. This has been Code and Stuff. Thanks for watching.